four, three, two, one. Ignition and liftoff. Liftoff. A NASA spacecraft is officially on the way to Jupiter to study one of the massive planet's moons. The solar-powered Europa Clipper took off Monday from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. After a 1.8 billion mile journey, it's projected to reach Jupiter by April of 2030. Once it gets there, the spacecraft will orbit Jupiter and conduct dozens of flybys of its Europa moon. And NASA scientists believe the moon's icy surface could be hiding a potentially habitable ocean environment beneath its crust. CBS News space consultant William Harwood joins us now. Bill, what information about Jupiter's moon are scientists hoping to gather? Well, you just said it. They want to probe the ocean that they believe is right under this icy crust that surrounds the planet. They've got a lot of data that indicates there's an ocean there. In fact, they think there is twice as much water in this sea, this hidden sea, as in all the oceans on planet Earth. Uh, so there's quite a bit of water there. The question is, does it provide a habitable environment for microorganisms, for example, or, or at least life as we know it on Earth? Um, the mission's not going to look directly for signs of living organisms. It's really trying to prove that organisms could or could not exist in this environment. They're looking at the habitability of the moon, uh, and that's the first step toward this question of, do planets like this or moons like this that have a lot of water? This isn't the only one. They have, there are several of those in our solar system and presumably in other solar systems uh, that might be abodes for life. So it's a fascinating mission. Unfortunately, like you said, it's not going to get there till 2030. We're going to have to wait a little while for the results. Yeah, like most things with space, we got to wait. It takes a while to get there. So, Bill, yeah. you kind of outlined what they're looking to do. How will they do it? I mean, how are they going to see through this ice sheet? So they're not really going to see through it. What they're going to do, it's kind of like if you're a patient in the hospital and you go through an MRI or one of those scanners that can see inside your body without opening it up. They've got ice penetrating radar on this spacecraft that'll see miles below the surface, wow. looking for pockets of water or even perhaps the interface where that crust meets the ocean below. Uh, they've got spectrometers to analyze the composition of the surface. It's possible that organic compounds have spewed out of uh, spewed out of fissures in the surface. So there might be material on the surface that would be an indicator of organic material and even possibly life. Um, and of course, they've got high resolution cameras that are going to map 90% of this moon in extraordinary detail. They'll be able to see things down to the, the size of a car. Uh, and they're going to learn volumes about this moon and by extension, by other bodies in the solar system and the universe at large that are similar. So after the Europa Clipper does what it needs to do, what's going to happen? They're going to crash it into the moon Ganymede. What? Uh, you might say, why would you <laughs> Why would you do that? Well, first of all, they may get a mission extension if the thing is still operating normally and the money is available. But at the end of the mission, uh, they're going to send it down to the surface of Ganymede where it'll be retired. And the reason for that is if you just leave it there without fuel orbiting Jupiter, there's a chance it could crash into Europa and any microbes that might have hitchhiked a ride out from Earth uh, would contaminate this potentially habitable environment. So, uh, yeah, that's what awaits. That, that's the fate that awaits it, uh, crash landing on Ganymede. Wow. All right. I want to talk to you about another mission before we let you go. The historic SpaceX Super Heavy Starship launch and recovery Sunday. How did it go? Well, it went by the book. I, it, I was amazed. You know, I mean, I think a lot of us were looking at this thinking they'll never pull this off. They're trying to grab a 23-story tall booster coming back for a landing under rocket power. The launch pad gantry has these big robot arms that are going to reach out and grab it and, set it and pull it down. I mean, you know, it's like science fiction. I, I thought the odds of a, of a failure were pretty, pretty high, but as we watch this video, you can see it's coming down right in between those grabbers, those, those pincer-like arms. And, and they wow. pulled it off. I'm, I'm still at a loss for words. It was quite an accomplishment. Ye of little faith. All right, Bill Harwood. <laughs> Thank you so That's much. That's right. <laughs>